Hi everyone, it's Mithril and welcome back to my journey of learning to draw. So I have started on block three, color, so exciting. Well, actually it took me over a week after finishing block two to actually get into block three. Actually watching the instructional videos and learning new stuff is just so intimidating and unknown, you know? Whenever I'm doing one of those homework assignments that basically just says, make another painting like the one you just made, I feel like I know what I'm getting into, I know how long stuff takes, I know how I can like budget my time and make sure I have enough time to finish it. You never know on the days when you have to do new videos. And things always seem to take longer than I think they will. And whenever I'm watching a new video, I always want to put into action whatever he's teaching me like that second because I feel like if I wait then I'll forget about it and next time I come back and I want to do it I have to watch the video again because I won't remember it anymore and it defeats the purpose of watching it now and doing it later and it's like a whole thing. It makes sense in my mind at least. Anyway so in the meanwhile I decided to try some more figure drawing. After all, one of my big art goals is learning to draw people really well. And people have been asking me, has Evolve improved my figure drawing skills? And I was curious too, so I decided to give it a go. Here are some figure drawings from last year that I did before I started Evolve. For some background, figures are pretty much the only thing I've wanted to draw since I started learning. And I've drawn a lot of them. I've taken a lot of courses, I've done two years of figuary, which is a challenge where you do 30 minutes of figure drawing every day for the month of February. However, I feel like in the last three years, I haven't made as much progress as I really wanted to. I'm realizing now that Volan was right. Learning to do something doesn't always look like the thing you want to do. Now I'm gonna show you some figure drawings I did in the last few weeks, after not doing any for months while I was working through Evolve Artist Blocks 1 and 2. My first attempts at some timed gestures were really frustrating and disappointing. I felt like I'd stood still, even gone back a bit from what I was able to do before. I felt just clumsy and confused as I scrambled to get some scribbles down during the allotted time. However, after I got into the groove of things a few days later, I started having an easier time and noticing that my observation and drawings did feel a bit different than before. I figured that I wanted to draw figures, so I should draw figures, right? No. In actuality, the better route would have been to learn to observe and see in general, then turn those skills toward the specific fields and subjects I wanted to improve in. There's a reason why there are prerequisites before taking certain math classes, because you need to understand those concepts first and everyone is going to assume you know it before walking through the door. They won't even mention those things because if you're in this class, you should know it, right? And they can build on top of that foundation to more complex topics. Of course, if you don't have the prerequisites, you can still learn and make some progress depending on how advanced this class is. But that new knowledge will be filled with holes and is unstable because you don't know why anything is the way it is. Those proofs were covered last class. Unfortunately, since I was self-studying art, no one was there to stop me from going into the wrong class and trying to learn stuff that was way above my level. Well, lots of people tried to tell me to stop and go the other way, but am I gonna listen to them? Of course not. Some things you just have to learn on your own or pay someone to keep you from hurting yourself, which is basically what I did by getting into Evolve. When I first attempted to get back into figure drawing, I had such a hard time translating my new Evolve skills to these new subjects of figures. Well, I'm still struggling, but I've noticed some specific areas of improvement. Now that I know how shadows work, I can actually see the shadows within the figure better than before. You can see that I had no idea which shadows to make gradients and which ones should be hard edges. I saw artwork from people like Lane Brown and I saw that they left some edges fuzzy and some of them were hard and it looked really good. So I tried to give it a go, but I didn't know which ones to do. So I just sort of made everything kind of fuzzy cause that's the best that I could do. Like looking at the reference images, I remember that I just couldn't see it. Like everything just looked like a fuzzy shadow to me. I could not understand how he was picking out like sharp versus soft edges, and which edges that were soft in the picture that you could make hard 
in order to make a better artwork. But now, on top of being able to actually distinguish them, I found that I've been able to go beyond the photograph, if even a little bit. In the first block with the pumpkin, I found that the stem in the photo looked like it was just made up of solid shadows without any gradients. But some of the shadows should have gradient edges based on the shape of the object. And based on that knowledge, I was able to make it look better and more believable in the painting than strictly what the photo was telling me to do using my artistic judgment. I feel like I'm starting to understand the role of the artist. I feel like I've been looking down on realism a bit and sort of had a mindset of like, why should I be learning to draw or paint from reality when a camera could do it perfectly? Now I'm starting to see how knowing the rules of reality allows you to break them or go beyond them in interesting ways. Lately, I've been very inspired by this painter, Alai Ganuza, who I found on Instagram. She paints kitchen items and foods, and she usually posts her reference images next to her paintings. I feel like her art is so gorgeous and colorful and fun, and I find myself thinking that her inspiration must have been equally so. But then I scroll over and it's just some mundane, dinky cell phone picture of dirty dishes or a kitchen counter, and I'm just like, wow. This is the power of an artistic touch. She can see the potential in a photo that I wouldn't give a second thought to as an artistic inspiration. Like, I feel like I'm adding that to my list of artistic goals, to make the ordinary feel magical and new. She even says that bright, colorful pictures aren't as fun to draw because they're so pretty and she can't add as much to it. Like, damn, I want that confidence. Anyhow, I think I'm starting to see how learning the rules of the world, like how light and shadow work and color and all that, can allow you to go beyond what you see in a photo, go beyond even what you see in real life with your eyes, and make things feel more real than real life. I feel like I understand now that that's the end goal, not to copy something perfectly. Although you'll probably be able to do that quite well with a bit of practice through what they teach you in Evolve. So then I finally found the over one hour I needed to watch all the videos for Block 3 Lesson 1. From what I can tell so far, Block 3 is all about perceiving and mixing colors. The first assignment is to trace the provided reference image onto the canvas and fill in all the shadows with their appropriate grayscale colors. Kevin said something about how light is color, and with no light there is no color, and that if you look at the shadowed side of objects around you, then you'll see that it's less saturated than the lit side. And I thought, that's kind of whack. I mean, I don't know, there's color everywhere, not just in the light bits of stuff. But as I've been looking around for the last couple weeks, I found that it's true. It's so much less saturated where there isn't light. I don't know, is that obvious? Am I the only one? <laughs> Let me know if you look around and you see that the shadows are less saturated after all. So the first step of our color training is only painting each section of light with one solid color and matching it the best we can by trying out different combinations of paint and holding the palette knife up to the photo to see how well it matches. Mixing the colors is such a tedious, time-consuming process and I've been exhausted mentally and physically after fiddling around with tiny bits of paint for two hours straight. It also uses up a massive amount of paper towels since you have to wipe the knife off every time you switch colors. On top of using paper towels, making so many changes to the color was using up all the paint. And by the time I actually started painting, I barely had enough to actually fill in any of the colors on the canvas. For the background on the first painting, I absolutely did not have enough paint, but I just bulldozed my way to finishing the piece by diluting it down with way too much oil because I had already been working on it for hours and I did not have time to mix up that color again. I learned my lesson and I mix a lot more paint now per color so I don't run out again. Even though it feels really hard now, I'm definitely putting my full effort into learning this the best I can so I can get to that stage where it is a lot quicker, easier, and less wasteful to mix colors. But I do understand that this is all part of the process and I need to take it seriously if I want to improve at the pace that I'm aiming for. Also, I just want to say that the new canvases we got for block three are divine to work with compared to the ones for blocks one and two. The old canvases had such a rough texture on them, and it made it really difficult to trace or paint with any kind of precision. I'm going to show some examples of how wobbly the transfer images are. 
And now just look at these new silky smooth transfer images. Oh, it's so satisfying. Anyhow, it was a huge pain, but I got most of the colors right. I did get some feedback that the pink didn't match, but I feel like that's a huge success for my first try with colors. The second homework is the same thing, but instead of working off a photo, I'm setting up a still life. So I'm supposed to set up the still life, measure out the proportions, draw it onto the canvas, fill in the shadows, then mix and match the colors and fill everything in. I believe that from here on out, I'll be alternating between one painting from life and one painting from photo reference. So this was supposed to be drawn using the same measuring technique from block two, but since Kevin suggested to me last time that I should just start sketching in paint right onto the canvas, I decided to hit him up and ask him for some tips and maybe a demonstration of how to do it. Like he showed me a whole demonstration of how to do it and he gave me a lot of really useful tips. Basically, I feel like it boils down to don't be married to any of the lines that you make. Always be looking to improve. Like do a really loose sketch the first time and then wipe away anything that you don't wanna keep. Then do another sketch. Like make things wider, taller, thinner, whatever you need. Fill in the shadows. Then never stop looking at your reference. Make sure that you don't paint all the way up to the edge just because the edge is there. Make sure that's what the shape actually looks like and you just keep actively looking as you fill in the shadows and you fill in the color and you fill in the background and in every single step is another opportunity for you to nudge the shape into place. And in the end, that's how you get a really accurate painting because you keep comparing and measuring and really keeping your brain active as you work. Then he gave me a demonstration of how you can use the principles of light and shadow, gradients, reflections, and highlights to make a whole human face from imagination in about 10 minutes. I won't be including that full video here, but you can see a preview. I'll upload it separately and put the link in the card so you can check it out and learn from Kevin's wisdom. There's no, there's no benefit. There's no benefit in doing something complex and, and failing. There's absolutely zero benefit. There's nothing to learn from it. Something simple sets the stage, helps you to formulate in, in your subconscious to formulate exactly how it works. And once you understand how it works, your brain can then figure out how to apply what you know to more complex subjects. There's a reason they don't teach addition with five digit numbers to start. It's exactly the same as one digit numbers, but why don't they teach it that way? Well, because it's easier to understand the idea in its most, in its simplest form, and then figure out how to apply that basic understanding to more complex subject matter or more complex um, math. Always start simple, make sense of it. In, in you want it, the first piece you do, you want it to be a no possible way of failing kind of piece. Cause you're gonna be, it's gonna inform you. And then the next piece, you'll have a sense of what you should tackle based on the first one. If it was easy, you know, you can really kind of ram it up a little bit. And if it was still tough, so you take it one step bigger, one step more complicated, okay? I definitely struggled on my first attempt of sketching with paint straight onto the canvas. I decided very unwisely to use a pretty small paintbrush for some reason and I kept on running out and it was very dry and my lines were scratchy and I had to like wipe the whole thing away with paper towels and try again and it was a whole mess. But the whole time I kept my eyes open, I kept looking at my reference and I made sure not to be afraid to change anything that I felt like was a different shape or was longer or shorter and just kept refining the shapes as I added the different layers of paint. I also asked him for advice on what I should be doing with the light because usually I paint by daylight and then it changes colors as the sun sets and then after it's dark I turn on my overhead lights which are yellow and there's just a lot of change in color throughout the day. He said that now that we're working with color it's really important that we have a consistent light source and that I need to switch out my light bulbs with something that's 5000 Kelvin or greater. So I finally swapped out my yellow light bulbs for some beautiful daylight bulbs and they're so bright and white and wonderful to work under. I don't know why I didn't switch them out sooner, but I'm really happy I did. And that's what I'll be painting under from now on. I feel like there should have been some sort of demonstration of doing the paintings from observation. The instructions were just do the same thing that you did with the photo, but in real life. And I feel like that's not enough because I did see that there was some confusion on the Facebook group about how to actually implement that. People were wondering, you know, we have like a different light shining down on the canvas than the light that's inside the shadow box. Am I supposed to hold up my palette knife from the chair? 
Or am I supposed to bring my palette knife and the paint into the lamplight and match the color that's like under the lamplight in front of my object? So I think the answer is you're supposed to sit in your chair and hold up your palette knife and match the color with this overhead light bouncing off the paint to the color that you see inside the box with the different light. Like you're looking for the color of the object plus the light, not just the object if you had the paint under the same light as the object. I hope that made sense at all. If you're confused, go have a one-on-one -on -one session with Piper. And if I'm wrong, let me know because I want to do this right. So I got the feedback back on my mustard bottle. They said that the color wasn't correct. It's more orange. My color was not saturated enough. I feel like that's been a consistent problem for me so far in like my first two paintings. My colors are just really muted compared to the reference image. They're like chalky. I guess I'm just adding too much white maybe. So then we go back to the transfer image and the photo reference. So we're supposed to put out every color of paint for every painting, even if we don't think we'll use it. It hurts a lot to see the paint that I have to throw away that I didn't even touch. But I understand that it's all part of the process as well. Kevin says that one of the reasons why color is so far into the program is that it's so dazzling and beautiful that it can cover up the other issues within the artwork. Like a color painting is harder to critique than one that's purely in black and white. Looking up at my wall, I feel like my newest color paintings just draw me in so much, even without all the gradients and the details that are in some of my more advanced black and white paintings. So maybe there's something to it. So in the initial videos about learning to mix colors, he gives a few tips like how adding white will lighten but also diminish colors, and that if you want to lower a color's intensity, you add the color opposite to it on the color wheel. Just simple stuff, really. And then he says, okay, good luck with your color mixing. And at first I was like, wait, what? That's it? But yeah, I guess it really is. Like he keeps saying, the amount of book knowledge that you can actually teach someone by just telling them it is so small compared to what you learn by putting that knowledge into practice and gaining proficiency in it. And you know what? I kind of sort of did it. I got the majority of the colors correct enough. Also, he says that you can have two good books about color that contradict each other. That doesn't make either one wrong, they're just ideas about how to think about color. I feel like that reinforces my belief that there are many different correct ways to learn how to make art and view the world. You just have to stick to one until you actually understand it. Otherwise, you'll get confused because different things can sound contradictory, but really just be saying the same thing. Anyway, so I'm really excited to get into color and I've realized that hey, maybe I can actually do it. In the end, homework one took four hours and 12 minutes, homework two took three hours and six minutes, and homework three took four hours and 16 minutes. And the reason why I want to find like a really good time for me to do these paintings is because he says that you gotta use these all up in one session. Like it's not recommended to save the paint or freeze the paint or let it dry up in any way. And like these are only supposed to last a couple hours, which makes me so nervous because it's so expensive and I don't want to waste it. Anyhow, I've been having a good time so far and I can't wait to get into gradients and colored shadows shadows and highlights and reflections and all that and start making those really advanced colored paintings. Be safe out there and remember that talent is a myth. Now, get back to work.